Hello everyone, this is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. Uh, we're talking about acid-base imbalance part two. Okay, along with the buffer system, a common fact that you'll often hear quoted is the fact uh, that there's a balance of um, bicarbonate and um, something called carbonic acid, or H2CO3. And that is um, actually what carbon dioxide becomes turns into carbonic acid, and we'll talk about why that is. Well, there's a normal ratio. Under normal circumstances, situations and circumstances, the ratio of bicarbonate to carbonic acid is 20 molecules of bicarbonate to one molecule of carbonic acid. Now, if that ratio becomes disturbed, let's say there's more carbonic acid now than bicarbonate, then the buffer system begins to fail, and I develop acidosis. However, if there's more bicarbonate than carbonic acid, then um, the buffer system begins to fail and I become alkalotic. So that's certainly something worth knowing. Okay, so why is carbon dioxide an acid? And boy, I had a hard time with this when I was in school. Um, not respiratory school, but when I went to nursing school um, and I was first taking my anatomy and physiology, I couldn't understand how carbon dioxide can be an acid. Because what is carbon dioxide? It's CO2, a carbon and two oxygens. I don't see any hydrogen in there. Well, this is what happens. When carbon dioxide is produced, remember it's a waste product, uh, pro uh, basically it's a waste product that comes out of the Krebs cycle, and it's produced, carbon dioxide's a gas. Um, gases, as we, gases don't really easily dissolve in blood. Um, like oxygen doesn't easily dissolve in blood. How do we transport oxygen? We have to attach it to hemoglobin and transport it through hemoglobin. Otherwise, we'd never be able to dissolve enough oxygen gas in the blood for us to live. Well, the same thing's true with carbon dioxide. It does dissolve easier than oxygen, but not as easy. So what we do, what the body does, is to get rid of that, to transport the carbon dioxide from the cells through the blood to the lungs, we turn it into something that's easier to transport in the blood. Remember, the blood is, is water, right? And um, water uh, interacts very well with polar other polar molecules and ions, especially. So what we do is we make the carbon dioxide, and then there's an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. And the enzyme helps, it catalyzes, um, enhances the reaction. What happens is... Well, I have carbon dioxide here, and I have water here, and then up on top I have carbonic anhydrase kind of helping out. Carbon dioxide plus H2O combine to create H2CO3. This H2CO3 is known as carbonic acid. Now, carbonic acid, so you can see where the, first of all, can you see where the hydrogen came from? It came from the water. Um, when H2O and CO2 combined. Now, carbonic acid um, is not very stable in an aqueous or a liquid or fluid environment, so carbonic acid breaks down very quickly. So, but what it breaks down into is interesting. It breaks down into bicarbonate and a hydrogen ion, or hydronium ion. So CO2 plus H2O equals... H2CO3, but H2CO3 breaks down into bicarb and a hydrogen ion. That's a one-to-one -one ratio, right? Bicarb one, carbonic acid, or um, uh, bicarb one, um, and uh, proton one. Okay, so this is our acid. So what happens is once that carbonic acid breaks down into a bicarb, and a hydrogen ion, those are both charged, right? Bicarb negative, hydrogen positive, they can be transported through the bloodstream. Once we get to the lungs, carbonic acid comes back, and that reaction that I just talked about is reversed. We can reverse it. It's a reversible reaction, unlike a fixed acid reaction, which is, is irreversible for the most part. So, hydrogen ion, bicarb, we can recombine to make H2CO3. That breaks back down into CO2 
and H2O, the CO2 is then exhaled. CO2 passes through the alveolar capillary membrane in its gas form. It fills up the alveoli and we can breathe it out. That is how carbon dioxide is an acid or a volatile acid. Volatile means gas and we can breathe it off. Is the fact that we have to turn it into an acid to transport it. Um, and about 80% of all the carbon dioxide produced in our body is actually transported in, in, in the form of, of bicarbonate. So hopefully um, that makes a little more, there's a little more intuition there. Okay, so let's talk about some of the normal values that we look at. The body's normal pH is a little alkaline. We, we are aware that 7.0 is a neutral pH. The normal pH of the body is uh, 7.35 to 7.45 with 7.40 being perfectly normal. But as, as you know, um, in measurement, um, there's a little bit of error. You know, you can't measure everything perfectly, and each machine's a little, little different.